All right, guys, we are back on. Um, not sure what happened there, but we are chatting with Heather today from uh, the Lime Boss, and I'm gonna go ahead and get her added in here. Um, not sure what was going on. All right, let's see if this works. And again, I apologize for the mess in the background. <laughs> okay, there we go. Go. I don't know what happened there. Did it cut out for you? Oh yeah, it just completely dropped me and said you have left. And I was like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> okay, yeah, it just like everything froze on my end and then it dropped. So, anyways, back at it. So, um, I don't think, yeah, at least on my end, all I heard was that you were Heather and the line boss, and then that's when everything went. <laughs> Awesome. Yes. So I am Heather Gray, a Lyme boss. I'm a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and certified bioenergetic practitioner. And I was basically born full of shit. Um, how many of us could relate, you know, being a kid, extremely constipated. I was sitting on the potty for so long that my feet would fall asleep. <laughs> And that was the start to my let's throw band-aids at symptoms instead of getting to the root cause of why this toddler was constipated. Um, hindsight's 2020. Um, that was the same year that my uncle had committed suicide. And there was a lot of um, early childhood trauma. I was kind of raised by alcoholic addicts. And then with the suicide in the mix, you know, it just was the perfect storm to kind of set off my autoimmune celiac. Plus, we were eating the standard American diet and all that fun stuff. And then all that really set me up to be the perfect host for Lyme disease when I got bit by a tick when I was 13. And that's kind of what dove me into the functional health world and the alternative world and the bioenergetic world. Because after having a disease in my body for over 27 years, undiagnosed, uh, by that time I had developed three autoimmune diseases, um, depression, multiple suicide attempts. Um, you know, it was time to take my power back, right? Uh, I had given it away so long, you know, TV, you know, you talked about that wellness culture, but TV, you know, this is a part of a balanced breakfast. <laughs> Bullshit. That's diabetes in the making is what that is, you know? So having to unravel and peel back all the lies and the crap that we've been fed for so long. And then, and then even taking it one step further in this past year with diving into like the trauma work, you know, resetting the nervous system, breath work, uh, body code, um, somatic experiencing, tapping, and just the how ridiculously simple this work is, but very, very powerful at helping move the needle when it comes to overcoming chronic anything, fill in the blank, right? That's the one thing I love about FDN is we don't actually, you know, treat or diagnose any disease, but we really set up the foundation for health. So regardless of whether it's cancer or weight, diabetes, you know, Lyme disease, I just, you know, went into Lyme because that was the biggest part of my story and I definitely saw a need as it was not being talked about very often there was there's still a lot of awareness that needs to be brought around this crazy ass disease and we're even still fighting <laughs> like the powers that be you know the CDC just recently this year acknowledged that chronic Lyme is a thing so up until really? this year if you had Lyme longer than a year you couldn't even get doctors to admit that you had it they wouldn't wow. even acknowledge you. So talk about like the gaslighting, right? That we, the ignorance, like it's a, it's a shit show. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided to throw my hat in the middle of that shit show. So here we are. <laughs> yes, totally hear you. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, that's the thing is we, we are raised in these environments. Uh, if it's physical, mental, emotional, that make us sick. And then we are made to feel like we're the crazy ones because you know we're trying all these things and it's not working and and then we're left in this place where you can get so confused and overwhelmed and um you know i've never had lyme but i've had an autoimmune disease and you know so from that standpoint of that feeling like your body is attacking yourself kind of place i know that very intimately um and you know it's just even that in and of itself, like even just saying the body is attacking itself, I don't think is a helpful narrative. And, um, you know, and it's just, I don't know, there's just, there's so much confusion out there. There's so much bullshit. And it just, and I think it always comes down to the fact that stress creates disease. And so if your healing journey is creating more stress, spoiler, like, 
you're not healing. And it's really, it, it can really be that simple. And I was actually just telling a client this a few minutes ago and I was just like, I know this sounds so ridiculous because there's so many things that you feel like you need to be doing right now. And maybe some of those things are important, but like the most important thing you can do right now is create joy and get out of this whole swirly mess of stress because it's not making you better. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, the whole point of our chat today is just going to be to help you if you've got an autoimmune disease or a Lyme or whatever it is, whatever chronic thing that seems to keep coming up for you over and over and over again, that there are basic principles to creating health and creating an environment for healing in your body that, you know, that a lot of people just aren't talking about um, yeah, and are a huge piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. A hundred percent, you know, and, and mindset is so huge and there's, there's, you know, two ways that you can kind of go about that. You either learn to love and appreciate the things that you have to do on your healing journey, or you need to, you know, uh, make space and, and just focus on the things that you can love at the time. You know, like I'm a goofball. I, I probably because I was not allowed me for ever that i am i actually love taking time for myself now like <laughs> coffee enemas in my sauna like every week <laughs> i happily do them because it makes me feel amazing afterwards and i know that's what's kind of kept me on my path of not relapsing is because i've stayed on top of some of those self-care items do i do as much as i used to when i was in the middle of the healing process no not at all but the stuff that i do have you know, I really make sure that I'm, I'm, it's in alignment, that I'm, I'm grateful. And there's weeks that I miss it and I don't kill myself and beat myself up and guilt around, you know, not being able to do it. But then when I can get back on the horse, I absolutely do get back on the horse. So yeah. yes, it's, you know, I had it, my very first teacher, she used to say quite often, bless it and go, you know, so mm -hmm. if there are times where you're, you know, out eating and you can't be around the type of food, you know, bless it and go, or if you can't, yeah. be, you know, do the exact, uh, self-care that you want to do for the day you know bless it and go like wherever you're at just be grateful for where it's at and stop and it's easier said than done and like right now i'm trying to take that same concept towards my business because i've been following some of these business gurus of you got to do these funnels and you got to yeah. do this and you got to do that and i have wasted i have fucking filed bankruptcy at the beginning of this year because of going down that rat hole of shit that wasn't in alignment with my heart my purpose and I, it didn't pay off mm -hmm. right it's the same thing in the health world like you can take the same stuff and apply it to any area of your life right 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 it Exactly. And I think it's this, it's this concept of perfectionism that I think that we, we get off of social media, if it's our business or our health or our relationships or our house or our kids or whatever. It's this idea that everything has to be perfect and everything has to be a certain way. And well, this clearly worked for this person. And why isn't it working for me when so much of what you see online is fake anyways. And that's the whole point of like, these chats is recognizing and, and helping other people understand that like you don't have to be perfect nobody has to be perfect and that's okay like that you aren't broken there's nothing wrong with you um you know when it comes to any topic if it's your finances or your health or your relationships there's basis or basics to creating health in certain areas of our lives for sure but outside of that, like there's just, there's just so much marketing and so much bullshit that just confuses us and creates more stress. We end up spending more money, more time, more stress, more disconnection, like, and it's nobody's better off for it. I was so. starting to resent my business. Like I'm a healer and I was starting to get bitter and resentment and like slightly short with some of the people I was working with. And I was like, hold the phone. Holy shit. This is not what I, you know, got into this for. Like, this is not the, yeah. no. So I had to take it, I had to take it back a notch. And, and, and then it, there are always going to be just a little bit of something that I don't like doing. Like I love doing my podcast, but I hate putting it out. I don't like fitting the copy and the graphics and the links and the uploading and the downloading. But when I do, I really try to make sure that my energy is in a good high vibration before I get into that. Because if not, if I send that stuff out into the world with that kind of resentment attached to it, do you think it's going to go very far? <laughs> No. Yeah. Um, so, well, let's talk about, so 
so since we're kind of talking about like healing chronic disease and again we're you know lyme is where you're an expert in um i specialize in anxiety in autoimmune disease and autism um so we have but i'm sure just like me you have worked with people from a whole wide range of things and if we are if you're talking to somebody dealing with some sort of chronic disease um kind of like you said your your sauna and coffee enema like what are some of the basics that either you do yourself or like the important things that you tell your clients like what are some of the basics to create health in from your standpoint awesome yeah actually i have a oh, whole i still have it i need to get it memorized <laughs> but i have the lime boss method to healing oh, and uh wow. yeah so you know the first one is l lymph drain detox that's where we started right i never realized how much i was going to love detox how much of a key player it was because I've got crappy genes, right? And so I don't detox properly. And then I was constipated from the age of four, basically my whole freaking life. You know, so detox, getting that lymph open, making sure you're peeing. I was never sweating either. Like I didn't realize that that was an issue, not sweating. I actually had to train my body how to sweat. And then, you know, sometimes it's a, uh, Sometimes it's like, a, oh, great, you know, I, I'm out where I don't want to be sweating. It's nice and sunny and hot, yeah. and I'm, like, drenched. And everyone else is looking at me like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, this is what <laughs> your body's supposed to do. Um, but they're looking at me like I'm sick or something. So, Al, lymph detox, uh, why? Put yourself first. Mothers, women, especially, we are such caregivers and servers, and we put everybody else's needs before our own, and we wonder why women are have a higher risk at a higher percentage of getting autoimmune and lyme disease than men and i think a lot of it is because we put ourselves on the back burner we got m mindfulness you know make sure like i said whatever it is that you're doing making sure that you're in the right state of mind before you're doing it otherwise you're going to completely um undermine the the work that you're doing um e exercise in a balanced way right yeah. Exercise is uh, can be a stress on the body, and the body doesn't recognize good stress and bad stress. So if you're out there doing CrossFit every day, and you're trying to overcome an autoimmune disease or Lyme, and you wonder why you're not getting any better, it's actually very counterproductive. Most women I've found when I work with, when I dial them back on their exercise, walking, yoga, light strength training, nothing that's like totally killing themselves, it's amazing what starts to happen. Yeah. Um, we got B, be the boss of your own health journey. <laughs> take responsibility because believe it or not you had a part in this you didn't just wake up one morning and oops i have an autoimmune disease even me like oh i got bit by an, a tick you know and it gave me lyme disease no 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 there was a perfect storm brewing that made me a good host mm -hmm. so at some point we have to lose the victim we have to lose the story and we have to become um our own boss of our own health journey um, oh, it was organic. I'm a big fan of, of organic. We've done so much crap to our food, to our water, to our air. The, the more uh, boulders that we can take off our immune system, the more toxins that we can take off our immune system, and the more our body can work. Um, and then we've got the last two S's, stress reduction and, and, and self-care. And mm -hmm. those can kind of go, you know, interchangeably, but just how important it is. Again, the, if you see a thread through that whole thing, right, putting yourself first, self-care, you know, stress reduction. I love, uh, I've just got finished with Dr. D Joe Dispenza's book, you know, uh, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Yeah. If you want something different, you have to be something different. We can't uh, go into a new healthy lifestyle with the same crap that got us sick to begin with. So there, you know, and I'm not like, there's a fine line between toxic positivity, right, and 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 spiritual bypassing, mm -hmm. and and living in your story, right, and 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 causing all these other issues. So there's a, I'm not like saying to just put on a smiley face and and say everything is awesome when everything's not. But there's there's a there's a definite uh, background pattern awareness that needs to be had around mindfulness and where your thoughts are and you know majority of the time right for sure for sure yeah i mean that's you know so i as far as like the mindset piece goes you know it's it's so interesting especially when if we're talking about an autoimmune disease there's such a huge 
connection to the way that we speak to ourselves in the way that our body, the messages our body gives us. And so, you know, we, Western medicine tells us an autoimmune disease is our body attacking itself, um, which uh, in my opinion is not necessarily true, but I think the aspect of that that is true is it's the way our mind that we are attacking ourselves mentally, right? So most of the women that I work with that have an autoimmune disease are people who are extremely hard on themselves and extremely like, you know, it's this everything needs to be perfect and I'm a personality. Yes, yeah. And it's just this perfectionism, nothing's good enough. And again, I'm saying this from like, that's me also like i had this i created this i'm type a i'm perfectionist i like it's just virgo like go 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 like just everything needs to be a certain way you know never good enough kind of bullshit is that's my bullshit right and that is the huge reason how it, in my creation of that of that symptom of those symptoms i had and so it's it is your body giving you a signal a message saying like something you're doing something you're thinking something you're feeling is not working for you here and um and that was my huge light bulb moment of recognizing that my body was not attacking itself my mind was to attacking myself i was creating this stress in my body and i had to shift that and I had, nobody could do it for me, no matter like, and I, and I had to feel it. I had, I couldn't just walk around and be like, oh my gosh, Megan, you're amazing. You stupid piece of shit. Like, no, I had to be like, okay. Like I, it, it couldn't start with this like fluffy flowery stuff. It was more just like, Megan, everything's okay. You're safe. Like is you're allowed to be okay right now. You're allowed to be happy. You're allowed to thrive. You don't have to keep pushing and just kind of almost reparenting myself rather than rather than going into all this like positive like oh my gosh life is amazing no it was more just like talking to myself like an adult like talking to myself like i was a child and just saying you know everything's fine you're okay like this is safe you're safe it's okay to be happy it's okay to be sad it's okay to be whatever um and so so much of it is looking so much in, in chronic disease is looking at the way we've been speaking to ourselves for our entire lives and that that piece of it is like is such a key to healing whatever chronic issue you are dealing with even if it's just anxiety even if it's you know whatever some simple thing it doesn't have to be cancer or an autoimmune disease it can be small things too um, but it's recognizing that there is an emotional and mental connection to that and um, without adding that piece into the healing puzzle like again your supplements and your diet and all that stuff is only going to get you so far because if you're still beating yourself up and still hating yourself like what's the point anyways right absolutely yeah and you just spoke about um uh, uh, miscommunication um crossed wires you know if you're saying one thing but feeling another if you're saying uh yeah, everything's amazing, but then you're still talking to yourself like shit. Like that's a that's a that's a disconnect, right? So that whole fake it till you make it, you know, might <laughs> might work just a little bit because it might help you start saying things that you're not used to saying. But if you actually don't feel them and and anchor them somewhere in your body, it's not gonna it's not gonna get you as far as if you can actually feel it. Yeah, because it's funny. I just put out a video the other day talking about talking to yourself like you would a loved one. You know, my kid my friends, my family, I would never talk to them the way that I used, used to talk to myself. And it was funny. It was actually my husband who helped me break that habit. I would say something out loud and he'd go, stop talking to my wife that way. Mm. And like stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, oh shit. He's like, yeah, don't, don't stop. Stop talking to my And, and it really helped me kind of become aware, yeah. right? Because a lot of times these damn tapes you know if i told you the dysfunctional bullshit i grew up with i never had anything nice to say yeah and never had anything nice said to me you yeah. know so those were the tapes in the background you should fucking yeah. idiot you're a loser you're fat you're never going to amount to anything you know over and over and over didn't even realize that those were playing in the background and i had it takes conscious effort it takes 
it took some work to really start unwinding these and putting in new patterns. And that's what I love about the ease of like body code and emotion code type stuff. Tapping, you know, these types of things that you don't have to actually relive. Yes. You know, all that trauma and that bullshit and have to remember um, to unwire and start to unravel the nervous system and start the healing process and put in new, you know, tapes that play in the background. For sure. Well, that's, you know, that's part of it, too, is like I, I know for me, at least in my journey, like I couldn't get to the point of shifting my mindset and really be, being able to talk to myself differently until I did that subconscious work. Like I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and I just couldn't get there. And then it was like adding the emotion code in and the body code in made such a huge difference and it created, it opened up so much space for me to be like, oh, okay, like now I can actually think clearly. Now I actually don't feel this like consistent need to basically berate myself all day long. Like, what am I going to do instead? And, and, and maybe, you know, on your journey, you need that. Maybe you don't. Um, because none of this is one size fits all and it's figuring out what works for you, but it's recognizing that in some way you need to make space for something new in some way, like we need to be adding in, um, a shift in mindset. We need to be adding in nourishing foods. We need to be adding in these things. And if you can't, if you can't, can't seem to do that on, on your own, there's lots of people that can help you do that. Um, and you know, and so sometimes, you know, again, for me, sometimes like the gluten-free diet and the supplements and all that, like it just, it wasn't enough. And that's, you know, and to recognize that if you are just starting out on this healing journey, or if you've been in it for a while and are feeling frustrated that like, there are other things you can do. And I'm not saying like, you know, just go eat McDonald's every day and, t and talk nice to yourself and you'll be fine. I'm just saying like that the, our mindset, our emotions, our stress, like that's just as important as everything else that you're doing. Um, and a lot of times that needs to come first. I had one one client, I I uh, love him dearly. He was one of my very first, and kind of like myself, you know, being a functional practitioner, right? I was great with the diets, great with the supplements. You want me in bed by this time? I'll do that. Yeah. And and I did that for years until I kept relapsing, and then I would, you know, try to I'd clean things up again, and then I'd relapse, and then I I figured out it was this nervous system piece, it was this subconscious stuff, and so trying to get him to understand that as well. It was so frustrating because <laughs> anytime oh, my anxiety was through the roof today, can you give me a new supplement? No. Did no. you do your breath work? Did you go for a walk? Did you put your feet in the grass? Did you get some sunlight? Have you, you know, have you journaled today? Have you, what, what were you grateful for? You know, no, I don't have time for that. And I'm like, I'm not giving you another supplement recommendation until you put these things into place. Like, People, it's so funny, the mindset, they poo-poo it thinking it's some woo-woo, hippy-dippy bullshit, but really that's where the magic lies. That's where the power lies. And it's free, folks. You know, a lot of those those types of stuff, like it's crazy. And mm -hmm. I, I never I never could get him on board and I had, I had to finally kind of cut him loose. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing you any favors right now. Right. Right. It's, until you decide you want to listen to this type of stuff and dig deeper and he yeah. didn't. So, you know. yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like, we, we have been taught that something's wrong. Take a pill. Right. We've been taught that kind of, that's the equation. That's how I was raised. That's how most everybody was raised. It was just Western medicine. And, you know, if you're sick, you go to the doctor, you take the pill he wants you to take. And then, then that's it. There's nothing else. No one's ever sitting there telling you as a kid, like, you know, write in your gratitude journal. Um, and so then when we were adults and we're sick and it's like it writing in a gratitude journal doesn't feel like enough. That doesn't feel like, like, no, I need a, so even if it's a pill or a supplement, it's the same exact thing. Like it's, we don't necessarily need all of this stuff to heal. It's about looking internally and um, and we were just never taught how to do that. Nobody, like, it's just, it's, it really is foreign to some people. And even for people who it's not foreign to, and they've been woo forever, like sometimes the simple things like going, um, you know, writing in a gratitude journal, taking a bath, going outside, getting sunlight, putting their feet in the grass, that still doesn't feel like enough. And we complicate it and we complicate it and we complicate it. And healing 
is so much easier than we have been led to believe. And I say that I think in every single thing that I do, um, it is so much easier and healing is joy. And so if we are doing something that creates joy, if that's eating outside with a friend, if that's getting sunshine, if that's whatever, know that on a biochemical level, you are setting your body up for healing. And the more stressed we are, and the more we're out there seeking answers, and the more that we're just, you know, go, 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 everything has to be perfect. We're just going to keep staying stuck and stuck. It's amazing the, how the synchronicities are. First, just, I love habit stacking, right? So like one of my favorite things to do, especially when things start to get a little overwhelming crazy i've got a to do list you know a mile long i actually put the brakes on everything i go outside and i meditate with my feet in the grass in the sun you know so i'm habit stacking i'm getting my vitamin d i'm grounding and i'm meditating all at the same time and people are like oh my god I, you know how do you do that well like in the middle it's amazing then i'll come back from that and oh i've all of a sudden got this like phone call from somebody who wants to do something amazing with me or some weird chunk of money that i didn't realize you know came into my account like it's crazy what happens when i let go and let god right when i when i just really tune in again calm my nervous system down and have the belief that things are going to be okay and that my body is healing and you know brendan burchard has got a method where he talks about the same thing getting quiet and asking what is the next best thing that's going to bring me joy mm -hmm. right and if it's going to go and get a freaking coffee then get your ass up and go get coffee and you do that thing until it no longer brings you joy and then you sit there again and, and get quiet mm -hmm. and ask the same question what's the next thing that's going to bring me joy and it's about getting into that flow state right and it, i i still can't get over again how simplistic it is and how well it it works like it's we're <laughs> We were not put on this earth to be a slave to the grind. Like, and that's what most of us have done. It's like, right. you gotta put your nose down and you gotta grind. And it's, it's no longer fun anymore. My business wasn't fun. My family wasn't fun. I wasn't having any fun. And it was a no wonder that I was kind of a reactive short bitch, you know, because I wasn't having any fun and that's not what life is about. So the, the whole, the joy part and finding joy in the, in the small mundane also is very helpful, but yeah, Finding joy is, is like number one, happiness, calming that nervous system down. Exactly. Like, and that's, <clears throat> that's, it can be free. It can be simple. You can do it right now. You don't have to wait for an appointment. You don't have to, you know, buy a supplement. You don't have to like, whatever you, it's just, you can just create that now. And um, so, yeah, so uh, this has been fun chatting with you. Um, where can people, or do you have anything else you wanted to share? Any like last little tidbits of wisdom for anybody who's, you know, dealing with some sort of chronic, chronic illness? Don't lose hope. Don't give up. You know, even that's probably one of the most common things that I hear in people with chronic Lyme disease and chronic disease in general is I've seen 20 different practitioner and I've done all the things, blah, blah, blah you know even if it didn't produce the type of outcome that you wanted you never know what kind of foundation those things that you've already put into practice and it's just a perfect combination of tweaking some little things to have everything fall into place so don't ever give up um and yeah if you want to learn more i've got a free cooking uh video series on my website nice. called real cooking for real life um and it's just the the lime boss.com l-y-m-e not l-i-m-e <laughs> Not that line. <laughs> All the time, time autocorrect. Uh, you would think my phone oh, would know me yeah. better by now. I'm like, seriously, I'm not talking about a margarita, you know? Like, come on. Lime. That's, your, that's your other website. <laughs> Crazy. The margarita boss. The margarita um, boss. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And if you are dealing with Lyme or something else like that, um, make sure you check out Heather's stuff. And, um, this will get posted to YouTube and all that fun stuff next week. I am taking off because I am moving. Um, so, but join in in two weeks for our next raw and relatable chat. And I hope everybody has a great day. Bye. Bye.